basic table faithful. One late October, I saw a rally through the eyes of a foreigner trained to root out all deception. She spoke the Queen's diction with broad authority, and when she listened, her lashes gave dangerous attention to the fight behind her words. Nothing less than honesty would do. Nothing less was provided. I told her of the rift between sincerity and devotion, and how us Americans pledge our souls to pretty packaging. I told her of cynicism's sway on our humors, guarding us from beatings, keeping us from preaching. I told her to keep an eye out for Washington's monument, as that's what makes gatherings glow. We saw together, with her sense of eyes, the failure of the record, a quarter of a million without the slightest call to action. We saw the vanity of comedians seemingly stripped of civic duty, content to leave the miracle of the moment barely bent. We saw the halcyon days of 1960s America, bludgeoned to death by ironic Sharpie billboards. She threw these convictions and a dozen more with posture. But sensing her intelligence, I told my tale with pleasure. We came to the mall along the beige gravel path, the ground alive with sounds of thousands of feet. In the shadow of the obelisk, it gave our walk purpose. It purified our personal defeats. Two-thirds of our friends were lost to the bottlenecks, beyond all hearing and sight. They sent by text well wishes and stayed around to bless us with their presence. I'll see their smile and film real dreams when I slip into old age. I'm led by a current to a grove of trees and settle in next to some Kennedy voters. They didn't catch all the references, but they felt the good intentions. Ceaseless walls of portable toilets flank us on the right, mounted by civilians caving in their bubble tops, craning for a view. The cops stopped shooing an hour ago. They ascended the stage to festival applause and got to the business of performance. Colbert in a flash of sequins, brandishing an irony PhD. Stewart in his East Coast common man, speaking sense from family dinners. Colbert is a paper mache giant. Stewart is the hero, absurd enough to fight it. Colbert singing spot on to a chorus line harmony. Stewart squeaking valiantly, then begging for forgiveness both making fast cuts and pundit quoting three-dimensional spectacle, both teaching mental hygiene to a crowd nodding in approval, a dentist's AV room morality play, with Colbert, the cavity monster, and Stewart, toothpaste personified. Colbert, showing the illogic logic of a mind two steps from belief, Stewart wearing his flaws on his sleeve and asking you please to observe them. Both submitting the postulate that journalism needs to again arrive before all that's left is a rolling Murdoch juggernaut with four presidential candidates opening as even bets. Colbert opening the door for frankness. Stewart stepping inside. Colbert, the bridegroom to comedy, never once flirting with desire. Stewart, underneath the sky of which no gray discloses, teaching laughter with a congeniality not seen on Senate floors or behind Senate doors or anything the House in Congress touches. Stewart, sampling metaphors we haven't heard in decades. Stewart, summoning something social studies teachers would die for. Stewart, who lays out nothing when nothing's all we need. When more branding as a subgroup is the last thing we quarter million need. Sanity is not sanity if you need a badge to prove it. I've got nothing against Bill Maher per se, but he totally, thoroughly blew it. He's indebted himself so far to the left, his right brain denies correspondence. Identifying fully with the party is cancer, so long as this beltway surrounds us. Yet Stewart kept his balances trim and his mind undivided. And his reward is a vantage point no comedian has ascended, no satirist could decline. But rather than wield it, he built for it a temple, trusting the power pure moments provide. Far saner to leave the ark lidded for a man whose ambitions seem blessedly modest. The passenger van drives up 95 as remembrance turns to conclusion. 
We're very good at acting how we're supposed to act, I told my royal companion. It was time for an action whose meanings wouldn't fit inside the Bibles. That yeah. conversation with that girl on the way back. Was you realize that? Was not the right word. Did you realize that was the framing narrative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. My royal companion. Yeah, yeah. She was quite British. Yes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that the conversation we had in the van back with this this woman Zoe was uh, fascinating because she was completely. A, well, first of all, she didn't. She didn't seen, like it. She, she didn't like it. She didn't like it at all. She had never seen the, the Daily Show before, once, uh, you know, coming there, and she was kind of expecting 1960s protest. She went to Chicago American. in 1968. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she wanted the movement. And uh, that wasn't it. And so she was very frustrated, and it was wonderful to hear her frustrations because it allowed me to think about that. I think you did a great job of, and summing up isn't the right word because obviously it's not short winded, yeah. but a great job of describing like uh, what it was that she missed, what it was that a comedian and satirist was able to accomplish that those many people would strove. Strove? Strove? Yeah. Strove. Strove. Who had strove to speak to us, right. frankly, had, had fallen short of. Yeah. Strivenness. I mean, with, with that, with that, like, with that offhanded, you know, comedic sense, like, John Stewart was able to speak to our generation in a way that people who were, you know, dying for our attention were never able to grasp. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's in there. I think it does it well. I, I, I think uh, he does a good job at, you know, setting the table for something. We discussed this in the event. Yeah, we did. I think there's... Well, we're already on the same side here. But yeah, yeah. I, I uh, would I have preferred if he had taken the next step? In a way, yes. If but he, he would. But I absolutely respect his desire to remain a comedian and, and there's and also to remain at that vantage point. And also, I hope that he continues to be that way. You know, I I would really hate it if he were to run for president or something like that someday. It would be very really disappointing if if he's going to make this statement that he did today. Then. He has officially said that he's not, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. he loses credibility if you're right.